Hello and welcome. This is Tamsin Lejeune. I'm CEO and founder of Common Objective. And a very warm welcome to everyone who's joined us for the seminar today from people coming in from all over the world. Um, so this is a very exciting time um, for us at Common Objective. Um, just before I go further with the webinar to let you know that on the right hand side of your screen you have a chat bar. Thank you Eunice for introducing yourself. Um, please do uh, put your questions there. Let us know if you have any sound issues or anything with the co-team can help um, sort those out. Um, but if you have questions, the sooner you can post them, the better to make sure that I answer them during the session. So we've had launched our crowdfund campaign on Crowdcube on Monday. Um, we've now just had our hundredth investor come in. So, so yeah, the Crowdcube uh, gaining momentum started to get some bigger ticket investments in now so that's all very exciting so I'm going to give you a, some background to Co. because what you don't get I guess from from our uh, from the pitch documents and neither the, the webinar or the the video to a certain extent is the background to Co. how we came up with this vision and why we see this as a really exciting opportunity. And then I'm going to run through quite quickly some of the slides on the deck. I know that many of you will have looked at it already, so I don't want to dwell on that too much. I don't want to go over things you already know. Um, and then I'll talk about the investment opportunity and answer any questions you may have. If at any time um, I'm lingering too long or you'd like to know more, please just notify me in the, in the chat. <clears throat> so, um, I founded the Ethical Fashion Forum way back in 2006 when there's very little going on around sustainability in the fashion industry. And, but there were fashion entrepreneurs, professionals and businesses finding it difficult, interested, already interested in operating more sustainably and finding it difficult. So we created the Ethical Fashion Forum, which is a platform to support that. Um, and we gained quite a lot of traction um, growing across the world over the first five years. Um, almost immediately though, we were looking at how could we scale this up? Um, we could see that there was exciting things happening, almost virally communities were growing all over the world that were there to support each other towards operating in a more sustainable way. And when we refer to sustainability with common objective, we're referring to business in three dimensions. So for us, a business isn't sustainable unless it's ticking all three boxes, social, environmental and um, financial. So it's how do you combine all three? And that was the original premise for common objective and for the for the co-platform how can we support businesses everywhere to operate in the most sustainable way and how can we turn what is very often seen as a complex challenging difficult dilemma into a solution and an opportunity why should sustainability be something that um, has to cost more and has to be a disadvantage in business it should be the opposite and so the vision for Co is that it would become the platform for sustainable business with fashion being the, just the beginning. <clears throat> We're beginning with the fashion industry because there are serious problems and serious opportunities there. Um, but the idea is to move that into uh, businesses everywhere. And the Co platform was created to solve that dilemma. So I'm going to go through some of the slides. Um, so some highlights. Um, this is actually already out of date. 27,000 members now across the industry. We saw a huge growth in engagement with our content over the last year. So during our first year, we launched the platform in May 2018. And during our first year, our real focus was on building a really strong and engaged brand brand base, leadership base, so decision makers, people who are setting up businesses, but also running and operating within some of the largest fashion brands in the world. Um, and as part of our strategy to do that, we developed over 300 resources and tools. Um, I have some screenshots I can show you um, around that. And so that delivered for us with a real growth in the number of engagement with those resources. Um, also saw quite a lot of traction for the brand, for the brand common objective with organic traffic growing quite considerably. And we launched revenue last year 
I'll tell you a bit more about that, but we had considerable growth during the year across our quarterly revenue. Um, huge market in fashion alone, 120 million professionals who are relevant to the opportunities that we offer, who, who have real pain points that we can solve. Um, so this is the problem where we began. Business as usual is simply not an option. And yet almost everybody, 90%, and that a recent survey proposes even more of executives see sustainability as important, but don't have answers. And it's particularly an issue in the fashion industry. I know we have a number of fashion um, owners, business owners in this room today, welcome. Um, and also a number of representatives of companies that are part of the solution. It's a huge challenge, but also a huge opportunity, enormously valuable industry, 2.4 trillion. Um, and the Drapers, Drapers just recently um, uh, um, represented, did a survey. Thank you, Eunice, for your question. I'm just noticing it. I'll make sure to answer that question. Um, it's a really good one on whether we're going to have a logo or a mark. Um, so it, in the fashion industry, the report showed that over 90% of fashion executives show, see their interest, their customers showing interest, and but they're not sure how to go about resolving that. And the industry still has an enormously negative impact with you know, a you know, majority of the world's water polluted with plastic and largely to do with the fashion industry because we're washing billions of synthetic clothing. So, And yet at the same time, um, the amount of polyester being produced is going up exponentially. So it really needs a step change. And Co is our vision with it is that it is about addressing the root cause of that problem, not the symptoms of that problem, but the root cause, which is how do you turn sustainability into a really viable economic opportunity for businesses everywhere? And so our solution does three things really, it offers guidance to individuals and businesses that need solutions, brand transparency, so businesses can talk about what they're saying, and this is pertinent to your point, Eunice, um, and the suppliers also can um, represent what they do and find solutions. So, we see, I mean, we're really aligned with the zeitgeist. It's crazy what's happened over the last year with the Global Fashion Pact and almost every major fashion brand committing to sustainability, but yet not having a solution to help them to do that. So, we're at sourcing an information platform and key to to key core algorithms um, <coughs> govern the way the platform works. So the first is a matching algorithm. So when you join up, I'd, if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to, to try out the site and, and sign up. Um, but we have quite an intuitive sign up process where you click uh, images and it builds up a profile around you as an individual or a business and what you're interested in and what you have to offer. And then the site matches you with solutions, um, suppliers, buyers, information training. Um, what's exciting to me and to our team is the, is our weighting algorithm. So the second algorithm, the way it works is that the more sustainable a business, and anybody can join the, the platform for free, create a business for, for, for profile for pre, free and then upgrade. Um, any business on the platform, the more sustainable it is, the higher its search ranking. So this is at the heart of our our, our concept uh, um, and our mission that we turn sustainability from a cost to an opportunity so those businesses that operate, are operating in a responsible way have more customers, more sales and succeed more commercially. Um, I won't go through that. So four key elements to the platform, the profiles, so quite intuitive profiles already, quite a few of our suppliers are using Co as their main web presence, um, particularly in the supplier sector, businesses don't tend to have a, a very brilliant um, online presence, particularly the smaller ones. And for Alibaba, this is certainly the primary way that they drive traffic to their site by being the number one web link for their suppliers. And so our suppliers are creating uh, intuitive um, profiles when you search for them by name on the, in Google, their profile and co comes up top. Um, matching I mentioned, weighting I mentioned, and tools are, our, I'll, I'll go through the over 300 resources and training already on the site. 
so the business model we started this year and there's a bit more on this later in the presentation we started this year with pro upgrades so you join the site for free you upgrade as an individual for access to information you upgrade as a business for access to buyers so the ability to promote more products to make more connections to present yourself um, not dissimilar to the way alibaba works um, and we also launched marketing solutions, so the ability to promote your business alongside what we're doing. We have a captive audience, over 27,000 users, two thirds of those are buyers and brands actively looking for solutions in the space. So we found a, a, a growing demand amongst businesses that have pioneering solutions to reach that market. And over the next year, um, we're going to be enhancing those pro upgrades, so integrating more functionality so that the, uh, the desire and demand for those upgrades becomes more compelling. The ability to view, for example, to understand who's looked at your profile, the ability to uh, analyze and connect with buyers through your profile, um, and assurance. So, Eunice, your, your question re relating to the logo. So, this is something that we have had a long history with. Um, Fairtrade Foundation was a founding member of the Ethical Fashion Forums platform source and is a founding a member of Common Objective, as is Global Organic Textile Standard, um, Textile Exchange, and a number of other certifying bodies. We have the great advantage competitively to bring together a really broad global expert database as well as loyal partnerships with some with the leaders in the certification space so we know this space quite well and what we don't want to do is replicate and reinvent the wheel um, there already are 200 um, co labels out there um, so we've come up with a, an innovative solution and with our um, certification body partners so that we are not only benefiting our members but also benefiting those partners so as a business on co you can gain badges so uh, this also drives our upgrades so if you, you in order to gain the badges you can get them through your own resources but you have a you can access a whole range of training and resources that support you to gain those badges and over the next year and particularly with this fundraising we're going to be investing in the robustness of that brand uh, uh, roadmap, that sustainability roadmap, where our goal is to create a race to the top so that peers are competing to be the most sustainable and to gain the most badges. So we will work in partnership with organizations on those badges. So we might have a fair work badge in association with the World Fair Trade Organization where you gain, um, <coughs> you, you, you commit to certain things and you achieve the badge. Now, the more we can automate this process, the more beneficial it is for us in terms of delivery, the more efficiently we can deliver it and the more we can deliver for our shareholders and for our members. Um, but we do recognize that there is also, in some circumstances, a need for bespoke um, it, consultancy and for that reason towards the end of last year we launched a consultancy and over the next year we've got um, revenue coming in through higher ticket consultancy packages that support the whole every other element of the platform. Um, what's interesting with this assurance upgrade badge um, is that it's it was the way Alibaba which is probably the closest platform to Co. if you're looking at a platform that has grown and how it works and how it has leveraged its network. Um, we're a cross between LinkedIn and Alibaba because we do professional networking as well. But the way that Alibaba um, <clears throat> turned things around, so at the beginning they, they had a very similar trajectory as us with a, a B2B directory that was um, connecting buyers with, with suppliers and it was a freemium platform any supplier could join from anywhere. Um, so the way they turned that around and became profitable and grew really successfully was with their gold supplier rating. So for about $5,000, uh, a business gets a gold supplier rating. Alibaba does a, a check of whether the business exists. That became almost a prerequisite to gain orders on Alibaba. And we'd be looking for the same thing with Co. We think that businesses should be operating sustainably as a prerequisite and and this badging system allows us to support them towards that roadmap so a key a, a, um, consideration with with co and to be aware of as, as, as a potential investor and as, as members is that 
we're not exclusive. Common Objective is not about ring fencing and saying this platform is only for businesses that have met a certain standard, which is pretty much the model of most of the other organizations out there. Um, the challenge with that model is it doesn't allow businesses to get on the roadmap. And often those businesses that have the worst um, impact are those at the bottom of the scale who most need to be engaging and more and more it's those businesses that want to engage that see an opportunity to do so so the way co works is that um, you join uh, you can join and have no sustainability credentials but you get very limited visibility on the site um, and then but through gaining badges you you are incentivized to, to get more visibility um, I'd talk through some of this. If you want to know more, you can visit in our restricted documents. In the uh, on the Crowdcube page, you'll see um, there's our detailed deck, which has all the information. You can go and read this afterwards. But this goes through some of the things I talked about. So why this is an exciting business model we see, um, you know, with huge opportunities to grow. Um, Alibaba began. It uh, was in a very similar space. We also see the future roadmap for Co going towards B two C. We chose to focus with B two B in the first instance because that's where the pain points lie. And if we are to compete on a B two C basis to become a platform that is able to compete on a global scale, we need to be upskilling and upscaling the businesses that are creating products. We need there to be more great product that is also sustainable. To, to fuel that model, but as a shareholder, that's where we want to get to. Um, so similar models, LinkedIn and Lynda.com is an interesting platform. So they've really leveraged their network. I mentioned again that we have we have the largest global database of experts. I'm sure we have some of them in the room. Um, and you know, we as a small team can do quite a lot. So we've developed set 300 resources. Many of those have drawn from our community as well to support businesses, but how much more can we achieve through leveraging the expertise of everybody in our network? And that's part of the goal with this fundraise. How can we move from being uh, an, an organization that delivers training and solutions to an organization that leverages so solutions from 27,000 initially um, members and shares those with others so that you can arrive on co and get an answer to almost any question from the person who knows and has done it before so just a few tick boxes on what we do and why we've grown i i mentioned first a year and a half has been all about um getting the leading businesses and that by leading i don't just mean big businesses i mean businesses that are leading the change and so we have thousands of representatives of SMEs and pioneering suppliers and brands, as well as um, experts who are looking and actively developing solutions in this space. <clears throat> we found uh, quite an interesting phenomenon with our users that we'll have one or two joining from a team from a particular brand, and then a few days later, two more join, and then we've got 10 or 15. And it's really our word of mouth viral thing that we're finding. There's this individuals want to know more. They want to know more and they see Co as a solution and they're passing it on without us having to do with invest. We've invested very little in, in the marketing side beyond our own network over the initial phase. Um, pretty great traction. Um, growing member growth. I talked through some of this of the businesses on the platform. Um, we've got almost every major brand represented. So represented by professionals and teams from that brand on there. And if you add them up, that's over 600 billion. So, you know, a huge lucrative market potential that we're tapping into in the next phase. Um, engagement with our content. I mentioned this, there's some links here. And again, if you go to the deck on on um, in our restricted documents, you can see what these are um, and get an idea of the quality of some of the resources we've developed. Um, we focused on clients and sponsored this year with, as I mentioned, pro upgrades as well as sponsoring partners, so a, a marketing solutions offer. Um, and we also work closely with trade network partners. Um, I mentioned Fair Trade Foundation, Global Organic Textile Standard. If we have organizations in the room now, um, collaboration is a core value for Co. It's in our name, common objective. We share a common objective to 
create great business that doesn't trash the planet. And in order to achieve that common objective, we need to be joining forces. Um, obviously, there is a competitive element sometimes um, in business, but we believe that through there, there's far more to be gained and that we can increase the size of the pie by working together. In a way, Co is very much an aggregator. So um, we, we bring together solutions and we what we're really good at is building a global engaged network that's looking for solutions and then matching them with those solutions. So we actively look to work with solutions providers in that way. Huge opportunity, I mentioned this, um, competitors. So we've got the advantage of, of being able to bring together sourcing, online sourcing, so far more, but less costly and more available um, than offline and intelligence um, that really isn't matched by the competitors currently in the space now. Um, our team, so I've, I've been in this quite a while, Harold Tillman joined us in 2016 as a lead investor in our first round um, and has been instrumental in helping to raise the profile of this platform. His history and background is as the longest serving chair of the British Fashion Council. So very connected with heads of industry across across the industry. He's pretty hands-on and incredibly committed to building a better fashion industry, but in the context of having operated for over 50 years as an investor and owner. Um, Sally Arukar, MD, uh, formerly MD of WGSN, so very relevant experience, particularly at this stage where we're focused on content and developing that content solution absolutely invaluable to our team. Um, Tom has been our founding CTO and 30 years experience building complex tech platforms. A lot of them are relevant to what we're doing. Um, Catherine Thomas, incredibly dynamic um, commercial director who uh, is opening doors for us left, right and center, um, formerly worked for the British Fashion Council and raised sponsorship for London Fashion Week. And um, Claire, and one of the world's foremost experts in sustainability and Q on our products, who's a bit of a creative genius when it comes to um, developing the product where it has been so far. Um, investment, so this is some of our existing investors. There's also Innovation Warehouse, who I haven't um, included on here. Um, Innovation Warehouse is a is an accelerator. They invested us in us and backed us in 2018. They support tech growth and tech platforms um, and we're pretty excited over the next stage so if you visited the Crowdcube platform you'll have seen that we're doing pretty well with the raise we're, we're just under 70% raised and we've got a lot of commitments um, from organizations individuals and businesses that we think will take us over our target raise so um, we're looking to move quite quickly over the next couple of weeks and the goals of this raise so split between product development and, and marketing and sales but three big things we're looking to get out of it in terms of tangible impact of the platform one is community so I mentioned leveraging our community so um, at the moment you're able to join co create profiles connect with others um, we want to step that up um, we're developing peer-to-peer -peer networking so um, you'll have known if you've attended a fashion industry event that very often the greatest value of that event is in the other people there. And particularly if you can get into a room with exactly the right people who you're looking to connect with, who you know have answers, who've already done it, or who are exactly the right sort of supplier for you. Um, in building our peer groups, so our co-circles on co, we'll be creating forums where we curate and co is all about curation unlike alibaba where you type in cotton or even organic cotton you get thousands of suppliers and how to navigate those co is all about navigating that solution giving you exactly what you need um, and getting you close to that so we've recognized that one of the ways to get to what you need particularly as a community is through um connecting with others the right other people um, 
And the other way we want to leverage our community is through user generated content, but in a clever, not the way LinkedIn has done it where anything goes and everybody's posting promotions, more the way lynda.com has done it where they've created very high quality product, training product on a whole range of topics. And it's almost the scalability of it is unlimited because unlike most training organizations where you have an internal team that's churning out training, they've created a model and a framework which allows them to get really high quality training from almost anybody in the network. And they do carefully vet the trainers, but it's an absolute win-win, a bit the way a platform like Airbnb is a win-win in that you that Airbnb's success is fueled by homeowners who benefit through sharing their home. Um, same with lynda.com. All of their training providers benefit. Many of them, for them, it's their primary income source. They benefit through sharing their expertise and training. And lynda.com benefits by having being able to offer answers on almost anything. And so that's where we're looking to go with our community, leveraging that. Um, analytics and, 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 and AI. Um, so this is all about um, how close can we get? How strong can we deliver um, the ability for the platform to get to exactly what you need? How can we improve the search, make it ramp up the matching so that when you land on your platform, it's almost... Um, preempting what you thought you were looking for. Um, and that includes things like um, the search functionality, they're upgrading that and um, the ability to <coughs> for it to remember searches that you have, have done in the past and to feed in that information and to be intelligent about, about that process. And the third is transactional trade. So um, for us, this has a dual purpose. One is, is revenue generating and the second is impact. We know that the very best way we can deliver for our members is through delivering sales. And the more we deliver sales for businesses, suppliers and brands that are operating in the most sustainable way, the more we prove the value of operating sustainably and the more we achieve our mission of turning sustainability from a cost into an opportunity. Um, so we see two phases in this it immediately and something that can move forward fairly quickly with is working with partners in the space um, who have comprehensive transactional trade solutions um, that we can plug in and generate a commission revenue through that it's again, it's a win-win. I mentioned that we're an aggregator. We want to be promoting solutions that are out there and matching them with customers. <clears throat> we benefit as a result, everybody wins. And then in the longer term, I think looking towards the ability to develop B2C because for many of our brands, um, the sector is moving away from wholesale and towards retail. And we wanna be putting spotlight on the best and getting them out there. And the, the exciting opportunity is that through a B2C platform, we would be able to do similar to what we're doing B2B, wait and change behavior around sustainability. So imagine a B2C platform where the buyers, the, the consumers are incentivized. Instead of being incentivized to buy lots of product at low cost, which we know is one of the the issues at the heart of the challenge of, of our fast fashion industry, where huge numbers of product are being produced and thrown away at low cost. Imagine if you had a site which encouraged and supported and incentivized consumers to spend money, but spend it in a way that is sustainable. So buy less, buy more product that, that, is, uh, that lasts a long time, spend the same amount, but spend it on, in a way that is going to further um, sustainability practice is going to support the brands that are really driving change in their communities and their production communities and supply chains. Um, so that's the, the future vision for that. <coughs> so this is our revenue growth. We launched um, services in Q end of Q2, pro upgrade and marketing solutions. And you can see that we've seen quite significant growth um, and <coughs> <coughs> we see that scaling. Um, the initial focus is on building a strong buyer and brand base. We're now looking at monetizing the supplier side um, so that we now we now have this um, almost captive community um, who are seeking sustainability solutions. Um, so in this next phase, we're ramping up the 
benefit and value you can get as a supplier, as a, as a premium upgrade. And we're also offering marketing solutions that you can buy into. So that could be everything from um, aligning yourself with content on Co. And remember, the content itself gets a lot of use. That almost sets a thought leadership opportunity for our partners um, which gives them far more value than than an advertor- than an you know an advert would um, aligning themselves alongside events and projects that we're doing through the co-site and finding a way to autom- automate that as far as possible um, then we're looking at scaling pro monetizing our transactions um, and global sector expansion so this is our projections um, now th- to let you know this is a base case it does not include projected revenue for through a B2C element. It does not include projected rel- revenue through a transactional element. We've based it on our three, our kind of core revenue streams, which are pro upgrade and marketing solutions that we have developed, marketing solutions and partnerships. Um, and that also includes a multi-user access. So one great opportunity for us is um, through, for example, big businesses, but also colleges. Um, offering access, building the loyalty and awareness of the brand right from the beginning of professionals journey. We've had an incredible response from fashion colleges. It's been part of what we've done from the beginning. The ability to give those students access and inspiration to drive forward change in the industry at the beginning of their year of their career without that implicating um, on the functionality of the platform itself, which is really about connecting buyers and suppliers. Um, valuation next again this page is is there for you in the detailed deck if you want more detail but we have seen for our current shareholders so those who joined our seed round um, in 2016 our valuation at that point was 2.2 million um, and we are now at 6.375 million which is qualified by our lead investors who came in at the beginning of this round um, so from you can see that the valuation is, is almost tripled our shareholders have seen their their shareholder value increase more more than double um and our goal is to continue to increase that um and that is one of the reasons we wanted to open this up to a crowdfund it's really important to us that we are led by the businesses for which we are developing this product um and as part of that part of the opportunity around um having members as partners uh, members as owners in co um we are looking to work with and build on our base of investing partners um so i've gone to a crowdfunding rewards which refers to the some benefits that you get through investing a range of different amounts in the platform um one way that we've worked from businesses right from the seed stage of our organization is to look for, seek the most sustainable and exciting brands and suppliers out there um, in order to um, promote them through the co-platform. It's a really a win-win. We work with them towards solutions at the same time they get um, exposure and promotion to our global base. <coughs> Um, existing um, investing partners include brands like Roland Murray and Vivian Westwood with whom we have worked for the last year with their teams developing their sustainability roadmap as well as promoting allowing them to communicate what they're doing um, as well as pioneering businesses for example Komodo and Thought Clothing, Plexus Cotton, Mantis World businesses that have pioneered solutions um, Komodo is the first sustainable fashion brand that's been out there um, launched in 1988 um, and so our investing partners benefit from promotion on the front page of the site um, on our partners page and depending on the package association with our content we have a hub capability on co so you can access um, information through a hub it's a way of us grouping information together that can be an association with a business it ramps up the promotion for that business in association so that could be anything from circular fashion to packaging to um, work workers empowerment to um, environmental considerations um, biosynthetics um, we have a number of investors who are coming in on some of those topics as as founding partners and as sponsoring partners um, 
when it comes to investing as an individual, again, we have a series of benefits. So as a, you know, if you invest hundred pounds, you get pro access on code for a year, which is a pretty great deal because normally that costs 199. So you get shares as well as that. Um, 500, we want to bring you in as a co-creator. So insider updates, we have an investor. We'll be launching an investor at the end of this crowdfund investor hub on co which brings together brands individuals and resources and allows the our investors to network and connect with each other on the site um founding member which is a part it's about you as a business so you operate you can have a pro spotlight membership for your business on the site as part of that and each of these rewards also gains all the benefits of the previous awards so um, you'd get the investor hub and all of the others um, and also the chance to actually meet our our other co-creators um, so at the 10,000 mark that's where our investing partnership packages kick in um, so you can invert you can be an individual founding partner or a business partner which gives you promotion on the front page um and then twenty thousand gives you legend status um individual pro access for life um that's pretty valuable and something we won't be offering in any future rounds um and then we do have of course investing partners who've come in um some of our Investing partners currently have come in at higher ticket amounts, 50,000 or 100, um, and that gives them a whole lot of promotion across the site. Um, so I'm going to keep going. I haven't had any um, other, just checking the questions in the chat. Um, yep, so do let me know if you have further questions or if there are particular things you'd like to cover. Um, we have 45 minutes left. Um, I'm going to go through some of the other options of what I want to invest as an individual, but then change it into a business. A business. So absolutely. Um, it, it's a, one of the advantage. Yes, not a problem. So one of the advantages of, and we have a number of our investing partners that have, we've given them investing partner status, but the investment has come from the founder of the business. And the advantage of that, if you're UK based, is that you can gain EIS tax relief. That's approximately a third of your investment you can get back in, in tax relief. Um, and we want to offer as many of our investors that opportunity as possible. So, so yes, you, we, we would, it, it's, you know, if you invest the, the, it, the amounts, we can, we can give you that. And I, I'm happy to liaise with anybody who wants more information on the um, investing packages um, and send you a document which sets those out. You've got my email address, um, so just let me know and I can do that. Um, and yes, with a, a business profile, um, you get, you, you would then be able to do all the benefits of investing partnership with your business profile. So your business profile would be represented on the on the front page, on the partners page. Um, great. So just run down to some of the reasons to invest in co. I won't go over those. We've got great people backing us. It's pretty exciting and some more amazing people coming in in the next phase. I've got, got a couple of screenshots of the site itself. Um, for those of you who haven't been to the site, so I can show you some of the resources that I talked about. Um, this is the sign up process. So you specify what you're interested in. Um, you land in your dashboard. So this is matching me with information and, and um, training relevant to me. I scroll down. I'm also matched with individuals and with businesses. So what you're seeing on this screen here in the organizations is the most sustainable options relating to what I've said I'm interested in. You can search um, and get quite granular around what it is you're looking for search under minimum order quantity. We are catering for a very diverse network. And so to get to that needle in the haystack, bespoke solution for everybody, the search and the matching is quite key. Um, you can connect with, so I mentioned we're a bit like a combination between LinkedIn and Alibaba. You can connect with anybody on the site. Um, we give guidance around that. And as I said, in the next phase, we're going to be building the opportunity to get supported in those connections. So almost have a host who's supporting you and introducing you the same way you would at a, at a, at a trade event or a round table. We're replicating that feeling of um, 
being a, a trade, trade happens through individuals in the end. It happens through relationships, the ability to build relationships online. Um, this is an example of a business profile. So we've worked quite hard to make them appeal to a buyer network. <coughs> um, got a question through on um, other industries. Thank you. Yes, I do. Very good question because I'm about to arrive at a slide which says what other industries um, we're looking at. So I'll cover that question when I get to that. I'll just run through some of these. Um, examples of content. So this is our 3D business suite, um, which offers solutions around what we refer to as business in 3D. So it's not 3D printing, but it's business in three dimensions, social, environmental and commercial. How do you build a business that really ticks all those three boxes? And we've looked at strategy, sourcing, production, product, uh, product development, and communication and sales. You can access all this content because partly as a and a promotion alongside this crowdfund, we've for the for the next few months opened up all pro content on the platform to make it available to everybody. Partly also because we were getting a lot of interest from sponsors and businesses that want to promote themselves to this network. And we wanted to deliver and maximize and grow value for them by getting lots of engaged people on the platform using our tools and resources. Um, this is an example of one of the toolkits in that 3D suite. So it's a downloadable PDF, but we'll be looking at making, building more interactivity into that on the site. So it gives you step, simple step-by-step -step process for how you build sustainability. You also have fibers and fabric section, so you can see this fabric switch series. If you haven't more familiar with that, you might find it quite helpful. Um, very visual um, solutions that take you through an option. In this case, it's sustainable stretch, the things you need to know about, and then connecting you with the businesses you can source it from, you can link with them, find the right person, connect with them on co, and really an all around solution for you with sustainable polyester. We've got quite a lot of content. We felt that it was important to understand the baseline of the industry. Um, so, where is the industry on sustainability? What's being produced? And so we created this report that we update every year. Um, and this is one, one example. We run awards that contributes to the ranking. This is a notice board. So as a pro member, you get to promote what you do to quite a, a bespoke community. And I'm just going to run to this. Um, here we are, <laughs> the, the uh, industry sectors where we look at um, expanding into other sectors. So I think on the growth, we would looked at probably from 2023 expanding into other sectors. But this really does um, slightly depend on our investment and funding trajectory and also the success of because um, we can go pretty deep with fashion. You know, we could decide to go B to C um, sooner than rather than later. Um, and so these are, but these are the areas we've identified, but already things like interiors and um, gifts and design are obvious ones because for a lot of our suppliers, um, they also ha are producing these products and are looking for buyers for them. So um, Eunice, thank you for your question. Are you going into workers' rights in third world countries? Um, Yes, absolutely. So we are not, what's important to, to note is that, that we are not an auditor. We may well be offering audit, audit services, but where we can really deliver value is through aggregating the work of others. Um, so increasingly, we're working with partners um, and workers' rights and social considerations are absolutely key. We have quite a lot of content on that, um, which if I, I would love to navigate you to some pages on Co about that, we've got a whole section on workers' rights, um, what businesses can do that, around that, how they can build that into their roadmap. And we will be integrating those sorts of badges. So as a business, you can work towards gaining, achieving a standard in that. Now, whereas we might not be sending members of our team to visit factories, we will be working with organizations that do that and promoting them to our, our audience and simplifying the process. Um, a, one of our growing number of users is, is suppliers working in the developing world. Um, and I think, you know, the opportunity to, who are, for those suppliers to make direct connections to market is part of the solution. 
Um, Gary, thank you. Yes, I saw your question come through on the sign up form, um, sustainable fashion aftercare, and I saw that you were from Green Earth Cleaning. And it, yes, I think this is something that is so pertinent to our network. It's we, We've had quite a lot of interest around aftercare and also pre-care and packaging. Um, we had over a thousand people sign up to a recent webinar we had on packaging um, because I guess it's 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 a place where we've got thousands of professionals who are looking for solutions. They want to do something. They want to know how to make the first step. Um, so this is one of those first steps. So certainly interested in talking to you. I think you put your phone number there. So perhaps we'd be we could set up a call around that. Um, yeah, and it, it, well, soon cl closing down. So, if there any, is there anything that I haven't covered, do let me know. Um, oh, somebody did ask a question about uh, competition. I'll run us to that slide so you can see what what that is. Um, so, I had a question about um, what if we don't achieve our target raise. So, Crowdcube is all or nothing. Um, you need to achieve your target if you're going to get the money and your investment. So at the moment, any investment you make through the platform is an expression of interest. Um, and it's confirmed at the close of the round. Um, so here's our competitors. <coughs> so um, we, but we do, we are already at over 70% of our raise and we're only three days into our campaign. So I think we're pretty optimistic that we'll achieve it and ho hopefully over fund. Part of it is just, um, let, we've got lots of people who said, said they want to invest and it does make a huge difference to us if investors come in and pledge their expression of interest this week or sooner rather than later because it drives the momentum of, of the campaign and helps us to, um, ideally we're, we're aiming to overfund. Um, and that allows us to achieve much more, not just for the business, but for all of our shareholders and all of our members. Um, and are we looking into the food industry? So certainly it's a potential for our future roadmap. Um, it is anything that has a complex supply chain and um, requires solutions for it. We're probably slightly more suited to the creative industry where you have a process of design, and production, our tools are very much aligned with that. But our intention is that Go Co should become the LinkedIn for sustainable business. That we are the solution for a sustainable business. The plan, and that's in our name. We, the reason why we chose to be called Co is we wanted that to stand for sustainable business. Um, and energy, energy, absolutely, is an option too. You know, the same way Alibaba is pretty much, um, uh, you know, expanded out to everything. I see that. <clears throat> um, yes, Virginia, really valid point about, so your, your question is tapping into other industries may take our focus away from the fashion industry. And that's why we're ruthlessly focused on fashion. We want to nail this solution for the fashion industry first. And fashion is, we, I mean, we made a conscious decision to, to start with fashion, partly because the challenges are so great, but also the opportunities are so great. If we can prove the case in fashion, the media reach that we have around fashion is huge. The ability for the industry to change minds and behavior and thoughts and address the consumers. And it's an exciting project, somewhat more than, than consumer electronics in some ways. Um, it's an exciting leader, uh, uh, leadership sector to, to work with. So 100% we want to nail it with this first. And and it, it, and it is, it, you know, if we were going to, to launch this out, we'd still be wanting to create this curated experience for each user. So if you're in an electronics business, you don't want, you're not interested in being connected with fashion professionals, obviously not. You need to be connected with your peer group and with the solutions that meet your needs. Um, so just to be clear on the competition, um, so you sort of see three different types of competition, um, sourcing platforms online. So we are essentially a sourcing platform. Um, so in a way we're, call, we're, we're competing with platforms like Alibaba, Lesuk, which has now come since Sembi and Fallsource. Increasingly we're partnering with these. And one of the partnerships that we're working towards for transactional trade is with the leader in transactional textile sourcing. Um, it's a win-win. We are not 
interested in they, they've been working for three years to develop an incredibly comprehensive solution which is all about the processes of textile sourcing um, the the risk and investment required in developing that solution we don't need to dive into we can tap into that them as a partner drive value for them by having businesses uh, operate through them um, they have sustainability as part of their remit as well um, and and we achieve we achieve a win-win um, and sourcing offline so you could you could argue that um, a, a fashion professional might choose to go to pure or to look on co we are finding that they're doing the two more and more together and so we see trade shows as a partnership opportunity and we do have um, <coughs> we are the, the leading sustainability partner for both fashion SVP and pure London which are the two two of the UK's largest trade shows what that means when it comes to pure for example is that all their exhibitors and all of their visitors are alerted about common objective um, we run a whole series of seminars and workshops there and the last season we ran a series of buyer tours around the site and this really tapped into our goal to make sustainability a, a, an opportunity rather than a cost so any business that met our sustainability standard that had was above a certain sustainability standard through their profile on co was included on the buyer tour so we brought key buyers and took them around pure from one stand to another um, which we hope made those stands who weren't on co who weren't operating in the sustainable way think mm, perhaps that's something i should get on board with um, and that's really at the essence of what we're trying to do to turn it into, into into an opportunity and intelligent platforms of course um, individual fashion professionals might choose to upgrade on business of fashion um, and and we see there being a, quite a difference with what we do and again looking at ways we can collaborate with them um, co um, is really about solutions in terms of our content it's solutions three-dimensional solutions how do you practically solve problems that you're facing and build a business that is both sustainable and um, so socially environmentally and commercially sustainable um, and so yeah I think beyond news and beyond articles is is what's key to the intelligence on co um, and it's matched to needs with a clear sustainability focus that taps into our expertise of over 12 years of running the ethical fashion forum um, anything else any other questions before i close this out i'm going to return to the rewards page um, and again as I mentioned, really happy to set up calls with any of you. We're, our office is very central in London. It's Three Princes Street, just around the corner from Oxford Circus. So if you'd like to pop in for a meeting, meet our team, um, that's also quite possible. Um, and yeah, I think we're I think we're just about there. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you on connecting with you on Crowdfoo Crowdcube. Um, Thanks so much for your questions.